In this video, we're learning about cell membranes. So we'll cover what cell membranes are, as well as the key structures in cell membranes and their functions. Let's begin by looking at what cell membranes are. The term cell membrane basically refers to any barrier surrounding a cell or within a cell, separating the space on the inside of the membrane from the space on the outside of the membrane. Now, membranes always contain phospholipids that arrange themselves into a phospholipid bilayer. And phospholipid bilayer just means there are two layers of phospholipids. This makes the membrane partially permeable or selectively permeable. So they allow some molecules to pass through, but not others. Now, there are actually two main types of cell membrane that you need to know about. Cell surface membranes and membranes around organelles. Cell surface membranes, which are sometimes called plasma membranes, act like barriers between the cell cytoplasm and the external environment, which we call the extracellular space. They control what substances can enter and exit the cell, which helps the cell maintain a stable internal environment. On the other hand, membranes around organelles, like those that surround organelles like these mitochondria, separate these organelles from the cytoplasm. This separation is called compartmentalization because it divides the cell into different compartments and helps it to manage its various functions efficiently. To understand the structures in cell membranes and their functions, we first need to talk about the fluid mosaic model, which is just a way to describe the arrangement of molecules within the membrane. This model represents the two main features of all cell membranes. Firstly, it's fluid, because in the phospholipid bilayer, the phospholipids are constantly moving, giving the membrane flexibility. And the mosaic part is because there are these proteins of various shapes and sizes embedded in the bilayer, like a mosaic pattern made up of lots of different tiles. The main components we find in the cell membrane are the phospholipid bilayer, which contains cholesterol molecules, but also the embedded proteins, glycoproteins, and glycolipids. So let's take a closer look at each of these in turn. If we start with the phospholipid bilayer, this is made up of phospholipids, each of which has a hydrophilic head that attracts water and a hydrophobic tail that repels water. Now, when we get a lot of phospholipids together, their hydrophilic heads face outwards towards the water in the cytoplasm and the water in the extracellular space while the hydrophobic tails face inwards towards each other, away from the water. This arrangement forms a barrier with a hydrophobic core in the center of the bilayer. And this is useful because it allows lipid-soluble substances to pass through, but not water-soluble substances. Next, we have cholesterol, which sits between some of the phospholipids in the bilayer. Now, cholesterol can sit in the membrane like this, because, like a phospholipid, it also has a hydrophobic region that binds to the hydrophobic tails of the phospholipids and a hydrophilic region that binds to their hydrophilic heads. The main function of cholesterol is to help stabilize the membrane at different temperatures. And it can do this because it influences its fluidity. At high temperatures, when the phospholipids have more kinetic energy and so tend to move around faster and drift apart, Cholesterol packs the phospholipids more closely together, which reduces the fluidity of the membrane. On the other hand, at low temperatures, when the phospholipids don't have much energy and tend to pack together really closely, cholesterol prevents these phospholipids from packing too tightly, and this increases the fluidity of the membrane. Now, let's take a look at some of the different proteins in the cell membrane, which fall into two main categories intrinsic proteins and extrinsic proteins. Intrinsic proteins, which are known as integral proteins, span the whole bilayer. So this would be an example of an intrinsic protein because it goes all the way across the phospholipid bilayer. They include channel and carrier proteins and their function is to transport large molecules and ions across the membrane. Then extrinsic proteins, which are sometimes called peripheral proteins, are only on one side of the bilayer. 
So these proteins here would be extrinsic proteins and their functions are to help with cell signaling or provide structural support. Finally then, let's go over glycoproteins and glycolipids. The glyco part means they have carbohydrates attached to them. So glycoproteins are proteins with a carbohydrate attached, like this one here. And glycolipids are lipids with a carbohydrate attached, making this an example of a glycolipid. Both types of molecule are involved in three key functions. Cell adhesion, which is the attachment of cells to each other. Cell recognition, which is how cells identify and recognize each other. And then third, cell signaling, which is how cells communicate with each other. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.